Hey y'all, thank you so much for taking the time to come over here and visit with me over on Rochester's Heating and Airs channel. I'm Fritz Rochester. I'm a Kentucky Master HVAC contractor right here in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, for those that follow me uh, and have been following me for, for a while now, and I appreciate it so much, I, I surely do. And uh, y'all know that I do uh, HVAC tech tips uh, from time to time, and they're more geared towards the uh, the new upcoming tradesman or tradeswoman into the HVAC industry. And I'm I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping they help out somewhat, and they actually help me out as well. You know, uh, it actually brushes me up on stuff that I already you know thought I knew, and it get, gets me a better understanding on it. Or you know, where there's always something changes and changing in our industry here, and uh, I want to try to stay up to date. It's not like homework to me. It's actually kind of fun to me. It's relaxing to go in and look up stuff. You know, so basically what I do, guys, is I'll get on the internet. I'll go to Yahoo. I'll go to Google, Firefox. It doesn't matter the search engine you're going to, and I'll I'll look for stuff that I find pertinent. You know, like a gas valves or or thermostats or uh, combustion analysis or the basics of a digital multimeter. And I just so happened to come across this awesome uh, PDF from the Ideal Industries. It's the basics of a digital multimeter, and it's got a lot of great stuff in it, guys. And I'll actually leave a link to the PDF in it as well. But when I came across this PDF, I actually had the pleasure to talk to a fellow named uh, Ron Kipper. Ron, is uh, he works for Ideal Industries, and he's the Ideal Retail Corporate Product Trainer. And I actually got to meet him right here on YouTube, guys. He's got a wonderful channel. It's Ron Kipper Datacom, and I'll actually leave a link below to him as well. Um, he is so, he's very knowledgeable. Um, I, I was actually doing some research on the, if you see the multimeter that fellow's holding right there, I was actually doing some research on that meter. And uh, he get, went through it step by step. And they've got several, several different meters on here. They carry tools, all kinds of great stuff. And, and Ron is a very, very knowledgeable man. And he's uh, kind-hearted, and, he, and basically, I think he'd bend over backwards to try to help anybody. And I appreciate it, Ron. And uh, Ron's given me permission to actually utilize this PDF, and uh, that's what we're going to do. It's going to be, like I said, it's probably going to be based more towards the, the newcomers to the trade. And uh, I hope you all find some of it interesting. Okay, we'll get right back. Hey, y'all, thank you so much for sticking around. And I guess we're ready to get started with the basics of digital multimeters. And before we actually get started with that part of it, I think we basically have to have a fundamental understanding of electricity. And I think uh, this PDF that I Ideal was uh, kind enough to uh, let us use here actually goes over it pretty daggone good. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here, guys. The basics of electricity. To better understand digital multimeters, it's helpful to become clear on the basics of electricity. After all, DMMs, digital multimeters, always measure some aspect of electricity. Electricity passing through a conductor is similar to water flowing through a pipe. Every pipe has force that creates a certain pressure causing water to flow. In the case of electricity, the force might be a generator, battery, solar panel, or some other power supply. The pressure created by the power supply is called voltage. Voltage is the pressure applied to the circuit. Current is the flow of electricity in the conductor. Resistance is any restriction to the flow of the current in a conductor. Voltage, current, and resistance are the three most fundamental components of electricity. Voltage is measured in volts, current is measured in amps, and resistance in ohms. Voltage, current, and resistance. Voltage is the pressure that is applied to a conductor. There are two common types of power sources, alternating current, AC, and direct current, DC. Alternating voltage is the most common form of electricity. It is the power supplied by the utility or generators, which flows through our electrical circuits. The symbol for AC voltage is right here. DC voltage is a constant level of stored energy. It is stored in batteries or converted from alternating voltage through the use of electronic rectifiers. Electronic products like TVs, VCRs, and computer equipment run on DC power. The symbol for DC voltage is right here. Current is the flow of electricity through a conductor. As with voltage, there are two types of current, AC and DC. The symbol for current is the letter A. The third component is resistance measured in ohms. 
Resistance in the circuit impedes the flow of current through a conductor. The symbol for resistance is the Greek omega, which is represented by that symbol right there, sometimes referred to as the horseshoe. Ohm's law. Together, voltage, current, and resistance comprise Ohm's law. Ohm's law is an important equation for electricians as well as HVAC technicians. By using a DMM, a digital multimeter, they can establish values for the three variables which help in diagnosing electrical problems. Ohm's law can be expressed in equation form in this way. Volts equals amps times ohms, or voltage equals current times resistance. Tech note. Voltage determines the flow of current. The greater the voltage, the greater the current. If resistance is increased, the current will decrease. Lower the resistance and current will increase. The relationship of these three elements of Ohm's law, volts, ohms, and amperes, must mathematically balance. Let's take an example. Say we have a 120 volt outlet and a hair dryer. If the hair dryer is set on low, it would draw 7 amps. The load resistance is around 17 ohms, but if we change the setting to high, the current draw would increase to 12 amps, and the load resistance will decrease to 10 ohms. All right, guys, I hope you all enjoyed uh, part one of our uh, the basics of digital multimeters. This was basically just covering the fundamentals of electricity. And I reckon we'll, uh, we'll be back to part two. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it, and I reckon we'll talk to you soon. And uh, please go over and check out Ron Kemper at Ron Kemper Datacom right here on YouTube. All right, guys, we'll talk to you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>